Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to look at conditions and the if statement in Kotlin. Now, in this video, we're just going to cover the most basic form of the if statement. So if you programmed in Java, this is exactly the same in Kotlin as it is in Java. So you probably don't need this video. On the other hand, if you are a complete beginner programmer, this is going to be a really important video. And if you're totally new to programming, it's probably going to seem pretty complicated when you see it. But with a bit of practice, you'll see it's really not that difficult. So in Kotlin, we have a bunch of things called operators, which are things like plus and minus and divide and so on. But what we're going to look at in this video is something called conditional operators. Let's just make a list of them here. So the basic conditional operators in Kotlin, or in Java for that matter, are equals equals. This is called the equality test operator, which checks if two things are equal to each other. We've also got not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. So let's just take a look at a few examples of these. I'm going to use print line here. And what these do is they compare two values in every case, and they tell you whether the condition applies or not. So for example, if I write three equals equals three, this expression will evaluate to true or false, depending on whether this is true or not. And in this case, it is true. Three is equal to three. So notice that we've got a double equals sign here. This is called the equality test operator, and it's different to the single equals sign known as the assignment operator. The single equal sign is only used for assigning values to variables, whereas this is used to test if two values are equal or not. And you can see we've got true down there. Now to make this a bit clearer, let's embed this in a string. So I'm going to put double quotes around this. And because I want this to actually run as code rather than to be just text, I'm going to put a dollar sign and curly brackets around the bit of actual code. And then I can put some text here. Let's call it equality test operator. And let's run that. So you can see it works as before it says true. The stuff inside the curly brackets after a dollar is run as if it's an actual bit of code rather than just being some text. So if we were to put, for example, two here, of course, that's now going to evaluate to false. And in general, when we have some kind of thing involving operators, which evaluates to a single value, like true or false or 3.2 or seven or whatever, we call that an expression. So we could call this a Boolean expression. Boolean means it evaluates to true or false. And the word Boolean comes from George Boole, who invented Boolean algebra. So I'm going to copy that line and we'll take a look at another one. Let's say two is not equal to three. We read this exclamation mark as not. Is that true or false? Well, it's true. Two is not equal to three. Let's change this to not equal operator. And you can see that we get true down here because this expression is true. I'll duplicate that and we'll look at less than. So this says two is less than three. Is that going to evaluate to true or false? Well, it's true because two is less than three. Let's change the text as well. So here we've got less than operator and this expression is true. If we duplicate this, we can try out greater than as well. Is two greater than three? That's now the greater than operator. Two is not greater than three, so this is going to be false. And here it says false. So if you get muddled up between less than and greater than, one trick is if you look at these symbols, they sort of have a small end, a pointed end, and they have a big end, sort of two prongs. If you've got the bigger value at the big end and a smaller value at the small end of the operator, then the expression evaluates to true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. So here we've got the smaller value at the big end of the operator, the bigger value at the small end. That's the wrong way round. So we know this is going to be false. Let's take a look at greater than or equals to. So this says three is greater than or equal to three. Is that true? Well, it's true because, okay, three is not greater than three, but it is equal to three. So three greater than or equal to three evaluates to true, as we can see here. 
And finally, we've got less than or equal, which actually I listed first in this list up here. So let's just duplicate this and I'm just going to change this one. So less than or equal to, let's say is 2 less than or equal to 3. Well, it's not equal to 3, but it is less than 3. So this expression is going to be true. And we can see less than or equal operator, that expression is evaluating to true. Now we can use all of these conditional operators in if statements, which conditionally execute blocks of code. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'll write out the kind of most elaborate possible form of the if statement. And it's going to look complicated, but we'll see that we can kind of break it down into bits and analyze it quite easily. So let's say, for example, we have a temperature. Let's say val temperature equals five or whatever in Celsius. And let's say we have a fridge, which is supposed to keep food cool. So I'm going to type some stuff out here and then I'm going to explain it. So we're going to say if round brackets temperature is less than zero, then a pair of curly brackets containing some code. And we're going to say print ln fridge to cold. Else if round brackets curly brackets temperature is less than four print ln fridge OK. And let's have another else space if round brackets curly brackets. And in there let's put temperature is less than five print ln fridge to warm. And then at the end we'll have else curly brackets print ln danger zone. So let's take a look at this. I'll just get rid of the console and we'll try to fit all of this on the screen. So you can see at the start here, we've got the if keyword, and that's followed by round brackets without any space. You can put space in, but probably best not to. And in the round brackets, we have a condition which can be true or false. So it's a Boolean expression using a conditional operator in this case. And then we have a code block, which is defined by an open and closed curly bracket. And in there, I've got one line of code. We can have multiple lines of code in here, but in this case, I've just got one. And we can actually delete the rest of this if we want to, if will work just by itself. And the purpose of it is to only execute this code if this condition is true. So is this condition true? No. So if I run this program, this is not going to get executed. The program's just going to carry on and do whatever comes after that. Let's write down here, finished. So if I run this, we can see it just says finished and there is no fridge too cold coming out. On the other hand, if I put, let's say, minus two in there and then I run it. So now this condition is true. Minus two is less than zero. So when I run it now, it says fridge too cold. Let's add some more stuff back in. So the next simplest version of this is an if with an else condition. So now we're saying if temperature is less than zero, do this, else do this. And with if else, one of these two blocks of code is always going to get executed. It's just a question of which one. If this condition is true, this block of code will get executed. Else, or in other words, otherwise, this block of code will get executed. So in this case, if I run this, it's going to say fridge too cold and we're not going to print danger zone. So there it is. But if I make the temperature warmer, let's make it two. Now this is false. And so it's going to do this instead. And you can see it says danger zone. Now let's add back in one of those else if conditions. So I'll just have one for the moment. So what does this do? Well, what's going to happen is the Java virtual machine will be executing this from the top downwards. And it's going to look to see if any of the conditions are true. So if this is true, it will do this. If that's not true, it's going to check this condition. So if that's false, it's going to check this. If that's true, it will do this. If this condition is not true, it's going to do this. So again, one of these three blocks of code is always going to get executed 
It's just a question of which one. And this condition won't even be checked unless this happens to be false. So if this is true, it's just going to do this and all the rest will get ignored. So which one of these will actually be printed? So we've got temperature set to 2. That means it's going to check this. Is temperature less than 0? No, it's not. So it's going to go on to this. Is temperature less than 4? Well, yes, it is. So it's going to do this and this will not get executed. Let's just run it to prove it. And you can see it says fridge OK. Now we can have multiple of these else if blocks. Let's put another one in. Let's try setting the temperature now to 4. So which of these blocks of code is going to get executed? So it's going to check this. The temperature is not less than 0, so that's false. It won't do this block of code between these curly brackets. Is the temperature less than 4? Well, no, it's not. It's actually 4, so it won't do this. Is the temperature less than 5? Yes, it is, so it will do this, and then this will be ignored, or anything that comes after that. Let's run this and check it. Now it says fridge too warm, so it is executing this. On the other hand, if all of the conditions here, we've got three conditions, if none of those are true, it's just going to do the else. So let's try setting this to 7, and if we run it, we're going to see it's going to print danger zone. And here we are. So you can see that this is the most kind of elaborate version of this sort of if statement. We've always got to have this initial if block here. That's a keyword followed by a condition in round brackets, followed by a code block. We've always got to have that. Then optionally, you can have zero or as many as you like of these else if statements. And then finally, at the end, you can, again, optionally, have a else statement, which will be executed if none of the conditions were matched. Now, the thing to do here, if you are a new programmer, is don't puzzle about this too much. Just try this code out for yourself. Because to learn programming, it's a lot like learning the piano or learning a language. Practice is key to it. So you can spend a long time puzzling over this and trying to think, is it working like this or is it working like that? But what you really need to do is just practice. And part of what you have to learn here is just where do the round brackets go? Where do the curly brackets go? So you might want to try typing a simple if statement for yourself and then delete that and see if you can type it again without looking back at the code, for example. That's a really good way to practice. But whatever you do, the important thing is try typing out if statements yourself Start with the simplest form and then try adding more else if blocks in. See how you get on with it. And gradually you will sort of learn where everything goes. And once you've learned that, it's actually a lot easier to understand it than if you're just coming to it cold, not having typed anything out at all and you're just puzzling over it. So I strongly recommend you to practice. Practice is key to this. So the entire program looks like this. Let's just zoom out a bit. That's the complete program, but don't forget I've got a GitHub repository where you can browse this code online. If you go to github.com slash caverprogramming slash kotlin and then go to the lecture you want and you'll find the relevant code for that particular lecture in the source folder. That's it for this video. In the next video probably what we'll do is we'll look at a version of the if statement that isn't found in Java. In fact that I think I may have only seen in Kotlin. So join me again for that, and until next time, happy coding.